Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Two teams will need their quarterbacks to step up and lead their offenses on the gridiron today. It's Mitchell Trubisky's Bears going up against Flacco's Ravens. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Larry, thanks. CA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Inner Harbor at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore, Maryland. The two teams emerging from their respective tunnels a minute ago to the approval of this Baltimore crowd. They're all set as their Ravens will match up with the Chicago Bears. Hi again, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And you know, Charles, as Larry pointed out in the open, got a couple of great quarterbacks set to square off here this afternoon. That ball's probably going to be flying all over the place, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt. And the game has never been more quarterback-centric than it is now. And both of these teams have top-flight signal callers. Set to go now is Connor Barth. And off we go from M&T Bank Stadium. And the return man, Chris Moore. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Baltimore up to bounce back following a home loss to Pittsburgh in week four. Here comes Joe Flacco. He's thrown six interceptions through the first four weeks, and only rookie Deshaun Kaiser of Cleveland has thrown more. I think this dates back for Joe Flacco to preseason when he was injured. Missed a lot of time, so not able to forge the normal connections going into the year. The other part, too, is when he throws this many interceptions, puts his defense in a really tough spot, and the Ravens have been better on defense in 2017. Got to cut that down to give his team a chance. They'll run it here. This is Buck Allen. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. And here now, the Baltimore offense. This organization's identity for years has been its defense, but if you take a closer look at the offense in 2016, better than you might think. 17th overall, 12th in passing. They're looking to take the next step now to becoming a top 10 offense in the NFL. Keep it on the ground. Allen again. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That's good for a Raven first down. 15 yards there. And that's something that's been lacking in Baltimore's running game the last few seasons. The ability to really hit on a big run. Last year, their longest run was just 41 yards all season. Four yards per carry near the bottom of the league. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Flacco gives to Allen, and he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And here are the Chicago defensive starters. The Chicago Bears defense in 2016 was right in the middle of the pack overall, ranking number 15 in total defense. But what hurts their pride? Number 27 against the run. And in the Windy City, where toughness is at a premium, that's not going to stand for very long. They want to get back to their old ways and shut that down. See if they stay on the ground for second down. A break from the ground game here. Flacco, and he's got the veteran here. It's Mike Wallace. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits, 
and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Third and one, who are you going to call? Not the scat back. You go with the big man, hand him the ball, and let him get upfield and pick up a first down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Now a play fake here on first down. And fights him off. He's going to look deep down the field. Into a double team and it's intercepted. Adrian Amos with a pick. And he'll be stopped shy of the 15 at the 14-yard line on the return. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First quarter, first drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. On to the field now come the Bears. After the interception, here's Trubisky. The catch is made by Kendall Wright. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. Second down, just one yard to go. Gun, Trubisky. Hauled in by Wheaton over the middle. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. They go play action here on first down. And this is complete to Zach Miller. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. And now a first down following that long gain. First carry now for Jordan Howard. And after the good game last play, this time they say, ah, uh -uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? And <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line. But how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? And the offense behind the chains here, a touch on second and 11. Let's go. Blue 
Again, it's Howard. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. The last two plays each lose a yard. They'll try to move forward here on third and 12. From the gun, it's Trubisky. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Here's Pat O'Donnell to punt in his fourth year from Miami. Back deep for the Ravens, Michael Campanero. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. The Ravens offense now, they get set to head back on the field. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. How about going and telling your defense, thank you, a huge thank you. You said it didn't lead to points, stalled off that drive. Now they've got a chance to redeem themselves and maybe reward their defense a little bit by putting some points on the board on this one. The drive starts with a run by Allen. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Single, single. Flacco here on second down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's able to get up here to the 26. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. And the offense lining up first and ten. Here's Allen. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you could see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was none there for him. A little bit of ground to make up for the offense as they face a second and 11. Now Flacco. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. Eddie Goldman getting in there from his defensive tackle spot to snow him under for a loss of four. Defense went 3-4. They got some push from the inside. And this is something in a 3-4 you don't normally get because the nose tackle who got the sack He's usually responsible or ends up getting double teamed and sometimes triple teamed. How about him working his way back and putting the big guy on the ground? Flacco and the Ravens now after the sack need something good here on third and long. 
Fake to Allen. Here's Flacco. Under pressure again, and down he goes again. Mitch Unrein in there to drop him, and back-to-back -back sacks now bring up fourth and long. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep the, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Fielded just inside the 30. 12 yards on the return that time, and the Bears take over. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? First and ten, it's Trubisky. Looking deep downfield. And that's caught inside the 30. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A gain of 32 that time. I like that about Trubisky. Has some calm in the pocket, some good presence, despite the fact only 13 starts in his college career and an entirely different style of offense. Remember, he played that spread stuff while at North Carolina. <laughs> on first down, Trubisky. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Sims. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Give him nine there on the first down completion. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give him a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Second down, Trubisky. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. It's an 8-yard pickup, and it leads to a first and goal. This offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions, and the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it, for them to get downfield that quickly? And now first and goal, expect them attack right here on this play. and goal. Howard able to push his way through. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Defensively, pretty good start there with their backs against the wall. That's a win for the stop troops right there. And if I'm them, I get a little bolder now. They won the first battle. Keep coming after them. Put the pressure on them. the seventh. They'll try again with Howard. And he'll be stopped up after only a couple of yards as he gets it down to the five. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. And before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter.
Nothing, nothing, our score. We're back to Baltimore after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis back with you as it's Bears football here to begin quarter number two. And they'll come up looking to keep this drive moving. An extra defensive back on the field here for third and goal. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Got his man and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. Kendall Wright, a five-yard touchdown. And the Bears are in for six. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? the timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route, ordinarily is probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. And he's got it to make it 7-0 in favor of the Bears. A drive that time of six plays. And the end result is a Bears touchdown. now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. <laughs> and he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And things haven't started so well for this side. Two drives, two punts. So now you've got to start looking not just at play calling, but which guy's going to step forward and say, okay, let's get this thing done. Because within that unit of 11, sometimes one guy can make a big time play and break through the barrier. They begin the drive on the ground with Allen. Some fancy footwork, but not much room to operate. Just up past the 25 and no further. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. It'd be hard to say that a defense wouldn't be ready for a first down run. And when you can gain that kind of yardage against a defense that's really kind of geared to stop that play, your confidence has to rise, and now you've actually opened up your playbook. If you want to throw the ball now for play action, you're good to go. They stay on the ground with Allen. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Flacco to throw here on third down. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Flacco to Perriman, and the Ravens have a first. With Steve Smith retiring, someone's got to fill the void as the number one receiver for the Baltimore Ravens. And Bashad Perriman, going into his third year, this needs to be his time. First round pick, of course, missed all of his rookie year with a knee injury, 33 catches last year. He has the ability. Now he has to just go out and do it. Here's the first carry for Alex Collins. And able to 
get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back. Like, it's lost. You can't find him. And sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guys trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. On first, they go right back to Collins and taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. That's another nice run, and I have to tell you, some of the coaches that I played for, their philosophies were always different when they see a guy running the ball well. Some of them wanted to immediately go to play action and throw it now because it's wide open. While other coaches said, you know something, until they stop him, that big boy is going to keep getting the football. And that might be the direction that they're going to go right now. Now a carry for Allen. <laughs> Spinning away. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. On second down, Flacco to throw. And he's got his man on the out route. Ten yards there, good enough for a Raven first down. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. Foster, offense. So that one will be accepted. Still first down. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. From the gun, Flacco. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Five yards will get him back to the original line of scrimmage, but now they're looking at third and ten. The Ravens on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and ten. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. And this is going to be incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. This from 44 yards out. Left hash. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. And that field goal caps an 11 play drive. It's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy.
Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. Joe Flacco and company heading back out onto the field. I'm sure he wanted to have a huge game, wants to have a huge game as the quarterback, but really on the ground, they've been very, very hard to stop. Maybe you just keep going to that well. I think so, and isn't it funny how the definition of balance changes for us from game to game? Sometimes it's 50-50, like run it, throw it. Sometimes it's just being a balanced running team in terms of who's carrying yeah, the football. more than one guy. Right, multiple guys out there, and now your guy back there has to throw it. They don't have to worry about it quite as much. And they've got the lead here in the second quarter. They go with Howard to begin the drive. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That'll set them back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make this a second and 13. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up in run support, made a big-time tackle. Might want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. They go with Howard again. And he'll be taken down right around the 27. It'll be a five-yard pickup there. So from second and 13, they're back to a more manageable third and eight. Five yards there. And remember, Howard last year, 5.2 yards per rush. So right around his average. The only Bears running back that's averaged that many yards per carry in a single season, Walter Payton. If Jordan Howard can keep up that type of pace, the city of Chicago will surely embrace him. Off the play fake, here's Trubisky. And he locates Wheaton complete. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys in plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an error in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. Another nice run there by Jordan Howard. And, and when we talk about fresh legs, how about 2016? Jordan Howard, the number two rookie rusher. Heck, the number two rusher in the NFL <laughs> behind another rookie, Ezekiel Elliott. In the first three weeks of the season, he only had 12 carries. So once week four hit, really found his groove. Throw on first down with Trubisky. And his throw is incomplete. He was looking for Jordan Howard that time. And that'll bring up second down. Again on second and ten, it's Trubisky. They'll set up the screen to Howard. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup.
Here's the first carry for Tariq Cohen. And this time the yards won't come so easy as they'll in fact tackle him behind the line. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Now that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. Trubisky to throw on second. And this is caught at the 8. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. Stop just outside the five at the six. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second in goal. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. Under four to go now as the clock runs, and they come up on second down. Here we go now. Boom, landed. Boom. This is Howard on second down. And he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. Jordan Howard, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Bears will add on to their lead. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball, but how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. Barthon for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And finishing it off with a touchdown run was Jordan Howard. Barth now to kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. They start the drive with a give to Allen. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And they'll take this one for about four up to the 40. Three, three. 
Flacco off play action. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Brashad Perriman, and it's third down. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. The Ravens on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. Setting up to throw Flacco. And that's complete. It's Watson. And he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to Baltimore after this. Back now, as I search for my cue card here, there we go. Coming up at halftime, Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando. He'll have highlights and analysis from our first half of play. Well read. Oh, thank you. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Flacco from the gun. That's caught out left by Paramount. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. The completion good for three and it's second down. They go pass again with Flacco. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Mike Wallace, the intended receiver, and it's third down. We always talk about receivers. If the ball hits your hand, you're supposed to haul it in, but it is hard to adjust to a pass thrown a little bit behind you. That one was. All the momentum going forward. Couldn't contort his body back to grab it. The Ravens on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and seven. And again, it's Flacco to throw. That is caught. It's Perriman. The Raven passing game getting in sync. Another first down. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it. Now the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football. But you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. First and 10 here for Flacco. Quick throw, that's complete on the inside slam. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. <laughs> Offense readies for a second and one. Once more, it's Flacco, and this is caught, Jeremy Macklin. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As the clock shows 50 seconds to play here at half number one. Go. 
So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. First down and goal, the offense knocking on the door. Flacco will take to the air again. That is caught at the seven yard line. And he's gonna be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Three yards is the game that time, second and goal. I think it's okay there, they didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily. Put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Second down, Flacco now. That's complete, right around the eight. And he'll be brought down this time at the five yard line. And a stoppage here, a timeout before this third down play takes place. As they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. So the offense took the timeout, looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. The offense on third down, they've converted four times out of six, not bad. This is third and goal. Now it's Flacco. This will be caught at about the six. So we reach halftime with the visiting Bears out on top here. As we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports halftime report. Larry? All right, Brandon, back to you and Charles in a bit. But first, let's get you caught up on all the highlights from the first half. The Ravens haven't played their best football and trailed because of it. The Bears have looked good on the road and will just try to keep the ball rolling in the second half. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Offense now with the shot after the interception. Defense will get to the quarterback here. This ends up as a loss of nine. long on right he's got to get the quarterback here this will go as a loss of five bears lined up at the five right's gonna haul in the pass and this play will go for six bears land the first punch bears have it late in the second they run it here with jordan howard and he'll end up sprinting into the end zone. Bears go up by 11. And with that, we'll wrap up our halftime report and head back out now to M&T Bank Stadium for the start of the second half.
So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This is fielded a couple yards deep. So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. He was looking for Zach Miller as tight in there. And it's second down. Hey, partner, while we have a second, wanted to mention Deshaun Watson giving up his first game check to those three Texans workers in the cafeteria who had lost so much in Hurricane Harvey. How cool was that? It's cool. And truthfully, it's not surprising when it comes from Deshaun Watson. Do you remember during the draft, after he got drafted, he read that letter yeah. to his mother? Yep. This is a kid who's empathetic, cares about people, cares about the world. And for him to make that gesture, the only thing that he's worried about is that it actually got out. You know, I don't think that he wanted it to be a public thing, but it just tells you just about who Deshaun Watson is. And how about his follow-up in the game? Yeah, he was against unbelievable. Tennessee. I mean, boy, he paid that off in a big way. And those workers, they'll never forget that. And everyone knows Deshaun Watson, he's the real deal in every aspect. So the offense has it first and 10. Now it's Trubisky. time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Terrell Suggs able to run him down for a loss of a yard. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slip free. Second down, here's Trubisky. He's going to let this one go deep. That's caught inside the 20. And he is taken down deep in Baltimore territory. It's a big-time play there for the Bears. 43 yards. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was not his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they'll do it on purpose. It doesn't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, They move, and they know it affects the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary, and I think you're exactly right. Wasn't his primary target. Found a secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. We use the word relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? The pigskin on the seven-yard line now. It's first and goal. Out of the gun, Trubisky. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in.
And we've got movement. I think this is against the Bears here. Let's find out. All -star offense. Still second down. It's Trubisky. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at a third and goal here. Throwing here, Trubisky. And that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. A great effort there. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Bears will extend their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. now for the extra point. And it's 21 to 3. So that drive in total eight plays. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10, kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. Now a toss play, <laughs> Allen. And oh, he spins past him and into space. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. I remember playing, and from a safety's perspective, when you saw a toss play and trying to see guys get to the edge and get outside, that was always a tough moment because where do you go to pick up the ball carrier? If they seal the edge and seal the perimeter, they're going to bounce that outside. It's a lot longer run, and you've got to make sure your angle is right because once they get to the edge, they're going to pick up good yardage. Your job now is to make sure they don't go all the way for a touchdown. You have to become an excellent tackler against a lot of bodies out leading a runner. 
And on this play, the defenders were finally able to rally to the ball after a big pickup of yardage and heard him out of bounds. Now Allen. And he will be brought down at about the 43 that time. A gain of three, second down. Now it's second and seven. They'll run with Allen. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. And yeah, they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Only a yard on the pick up there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. Well, big man with ball met bigger man on the other side of the line. A really nice play for the defense. Here's Sam Cook now as he'll punt it away for the second time. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds and it'll be spotted, spotted at the 14-yard line. The Bears offense led by Mitch Trubisky heading back out there. He has been consistent, hasn't he? He played well in the first quarter, good second quarter, and now continuing that here in the third. And that's the word that they're always seeking from the guy taking the snaps is consistency. Taking care of the ball, making sure it gets to the right people, no errors, right? Not turning it over and just doing all the right things. That's leadership, and it inspires confidence in a team. Yeah, been a good leadership and a good distributor. They'll begin the drive with Howard. Brought down around the 16 or 17. Showed some tough running, but couldn't free much space. Two yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and eight. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. Well, winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game. But when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, of one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. Trubisky with a give to Howard. And he finds enough of an opening to get this one back up to his 20. And it's still about three yards shy of a first as the four-yard pickup brings it to third down. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. The Bears on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This time it's third and three. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Finds his target, it's Bellamy. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. First down, Trubisky. Wheaton with a catch right side. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Well, you think he loved the protection he had there all kinds of time. And you're so right. How could you not love that? Great protection. The big guys up front really locked in on it. No one gets near the quarterback. He's got all the time in the world to survey the field and deliver for our first down. And the big boys up front, a big reason why they're also winning, too. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Let's go, go. Blue 90. Blue 90. 
from midfield now. Here's Trubisky. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. On the handoff, this is Howard. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Looking to throw again, Trubisky. Throw left side, complete. That's Thompson. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. The reception good for seven. It's third down. The Bears on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This is going to be third and 13. Play action. It's Trubisky. Completion left side to Miller. It's a pickup of 13, but they're still a bit short, and it'll be fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And they won't try and pooch it. It's a fake. Now a late flag comes in as they got him down via the face mask, and that'll give him even better starting position. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Red zone opportunity. From the red zone now, here's Trubisky on first down. And he's not able to get away. Sacked back at the 22. Zadarius Smith from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range, and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. All right, here we go. Green, 39. On second down, Trubisky. Hauled in by Wheaton over the middle. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. I think this was a good signing by the Chicago Bears, picking up Marcus Wheaton from Pittsburgh. They had to do something to try and lessen the loss of Alshon Jeffrey. Injuries last year holding him to just three games, four catches. But the two years prior to that, he combined for 97 grabs. The Bears on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This is third and nine. Green, 39. Here's Trubisky to throw. 
Got his man, and it's caught for a Chicago touchdown. Zach Miller from 13 yards out, and the Bears will add on to their lead. And Pointer, they found a gap there on the post pattern in the middle of the end zone. And ordinarily, that's a tough spot to find because there's usually coverage to take away that portion of the field. But they found a gap, and they exploited it. Now Barth for the extra point. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. A 10-play drive that time. And the end result is a Bears touchdown. now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. <laughs> and he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. And now they'll run it here off tackle. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. Part, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. They'll run it now out of the gun. Yeah, that play is blown up. Losing yardage back at the 35. It's a loss of two. Now third down. We all have habits. We can be somewhat predictable. And you know me pretty well on second down and short. What I like to say. Play action. Yeah, without a doubt. I thought that was a great spot to call it. Instead, didn't go their way, did it? No, defense sold out for the run. Worked out well. The Ravens on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This time they face a third and two. Let's go, wait. We're out. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot of it's been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. <laughs> Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Here's Collins. And an alley to run. Fancy footwork at the 45. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. 16 yards on that one and a Raven first. 
And that run was what a lot of people call an explosive run. Gave them good yardage, solid yardage. They feel good about the whole thing, and they did it behind a two tight end set. It's always interesting to watch what offenses want to do with the two tight ends. Sometimes they line them up together for a power set. Sometimes they put one on each side of the line of scrimmage to balance things out. No matter what, though, when you see two tight ends on the field, your first thought is to think of run. In this case, the offense was able to run successfully. As they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Flacco finds his man, Watson over the middle. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Second down, Flacco to throw. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Buck Allen, his running back that time. And it's third and short. The Ravens on third down. Five out of nine thus far. Here it's third and three. Flacco from the gun, and that's complete. It's Watson, and he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. It's a pickup of 11 at a Baltimore first down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer is now with his height setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Oh, he had six points in his hands there. Couldn't hang on. Second down. Those throwing windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Flacco to throw again on second down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Jeremy Macklin, the intended receiver, and it's third down. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're speaking a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. And again, it's Flacco to throw. And he comes back with one complete. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. drive the defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field that's it. That's it. 
There's a first down run with Collins. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. And now for the offense, this is play number 11 here on this drive. Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. False start offense. Just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. They'll run it now out of the gun. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Personal foul. Face mask. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So five yards remain now. Still first down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. Be interesting to see now what they do offensively down near the goal line after not much there that time. As the offensive play caller, that may change your sequence now. Instead of coming right back with a running play, you may have to go to the air. Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. False start, offense. And this seemingly endless drive continues. Flacco here on second down. Muscles him off. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Alex Collins that time, and it's third down. You got to be precise with your throws, especially in this situation. You're inside the 10-yard line going into the end zone. But sometimes the emotion, the excitement, sometimes the decisions just aren't made very well because of that. And this offense on third down today, they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This is third and goal. Flacco. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. And a field goal obviously means nothing here. They're going to go ahead and go for it on fourth down. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. The field goal doesn't help. They're going to go for the six here on fourth and goal. Got 
Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt. And the Bears will get the football back. And they've now made two trips to the red zone and still looking for their first touchdown. Not able to punch it in. And if you're on defense, your confidence is sky high. Because mentally, you're saying, hey, you're in the red zone. We're thinking we're giving up three. We just want to give up six. In this case, they end up not giving up the touchdown at all. They've got to feel great about what they got done. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Give to Howard, and he's going to be taken down right at about the 15-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lent up. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> and brought down, but not before they're able to get it up to the 25. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Now Howard. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. Well, not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. The Bears on third down. They've been very good, five for seven thus far. This is third and 11. Again, it's Cohen. And an alley to run. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. <laughs> Running with Howard. And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Decent chunk of yardage still left here. Second and seven. They run with Howard. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. But it was stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. The Bears on third down. They've hit on six of their eight tries. Very good. This is third and seven. Green, 39. Green. Here's Trubisky. And that is incomplete. He 
Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he's on to punt for Chicago. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. Here comes the Raven offense now ready for another possession. They had a great drive going last time. They were moving the ball, and then all of a sudden it just stalled out. So we'll see what they can do here, Charles. And it's always easy to second guess when you don't get it on a fourth down try. But they had to like the feeling that they had going on offense. They want to continue to see if they can capture that again on this drive and maybe get in the same position. Yeah, and that's, I mean, like I said, they were moving the football. It's not like they went four and out, so I don't think it's a deal where the offense doesn't have confidence. No, I agree with you totally on that one. If, that, if anything, they may have gained more confidence. Okay, they stopped us once. That's all right. Let's keep moving it. Make them do it again. Flacco. That's into the hands of Wallace over the middle. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Raven first down. So here we go, first and 10 now. Operating out of the gun, Flacco over the middle complete. That's Watson. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. From the gun, Flacco. His throw incomplete. Ben Watson was the intended target, and it's third down. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously gotten smart, and his pride has kicked in. Made a terrific play. The Bears have put an extra defender in the secondary on third down. Yep, they're in the nickel. Once more, it's Flacco. To the right side, and he's got Macklin complete. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Did you see that route the way that I did? I yep. thought he was trying to get deep Yeah, that first. wasn't the first option. No, not at all. He came off of that guy, the deep guy, and came underneath on the drag, completed it very well. Fresh set of downs here. They go pass again with Flacco. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they're marching off another 15 against your squad. throw on first and 10 with Flacco. This will be caught inside the 10. And they do get him down, but he's inside the 5 all the way to the 3. Give him 30 yards there.
Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. Trying to keep those big legs churning, but he's going to go down in the backfield. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll make it second and goal. After a play like that, it should be congratulations all the way around, I think, because if you can stop a big fullback like that, that's not easily done. Yeah, he does not go down easily. You're right, but he did there. It's second and goal. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. He lost four there, and it's third down. Time for a break. Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Here's Flacco. And this is caught. Touchdown, Baltimore. Mike Wallace from eight yards out. And the Ravens get a bit closer. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller, but they've retained their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height. Still an important piece of business to take care of, the extra point. Man, this is up and good. It cuts the lead to 28-10 now. So that drive goes eight plays, and it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. So still lots of work left to do, but here comes the onside kick. And it's picked up by the Ravens. Great job by the kick team there to get the football, but also don't forget about the man that started it, the lonesome kicker himself. I love that you brought him into it because he doesn't get nearly the attention he deserves. Oftentimes, it's only when it's negative. In this case, he created a positive play for his team. First and ten, and Flacco looking to throw. And this one caught by Max Williams. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A gain of 32 that time. Now flags come in. I think one of the Ravens got going a little early. False start, offense.
First and 15 here behind the chains. Setting up to throw, Flacco. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Now Flacco. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Mitch Unrein in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. Here we go, fourth down, fourth quarter, Flacco. Well, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Akeem Hicks in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't matter. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. They have the big cushion here in the final stages of this one. I don't know if there's any better feeling than being up big on the road. There really can't be because for a team to go on the road and win in the NFL, that's huge to begin with. But just think about all the preparation that went into it. When they first started talking about this game, leading up to it during the week, going on the road, unfamiliar city, obviously, unfamiliar hotel, no one's going to be with you once you get to the stadium. They're all going to be against you. You name it, all those things they had to deal with, they were able to conquer them and do it convincingly. Yeah, they did it very convincingly, and now the final moments of this one. Give them a couple on the carry there, second and eight. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Again, it's Howard, and he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you prime the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. From Baltimore, so long, everybody.